Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, I'm going to show you how, how to use annotations as a um, alternative to, uh, you know, storing information in a superclass. Now, I have right here this uh, Economy 29 plugin, uh, which we made in a past mini series. Now, what we're going to do today can apply to any um, plugin that has, you know, a command manager and a command superclass for all of the subcommands. Uh, you know, like any of, like Economy 29, Permissions 29, uh, any of the mini games that I've ever done, and also some of the other plugins that I've shown you before. If your um, plugin or if your uh, command system works similar to this, then you can use the same method. I'm just going to demonstrate it using Economy 29. Um, now, Annotations in Java are one of the lesser used um, features of Java. In my, you know, two years of programming, I've never actually created my own annotation. I've used other ones, like you've probably seen the override annotation, or suppress warnings, or even the event handler annotation that Bucket has. Uh, but I've never actually made one, and today we're going to make one uh, that will basically take all of this code and take all of this code right here and condense it to be much much smaller and maybe even a little bit easier to handle uh, if that didn't make sense just uh, you'll 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 definitely understand in a few minutes we're gonna go ahead and create a new um, annotation which we're going to call uh, command data it's gonna store you know all the data for the command that is currently being stored in the eco command class now you'll notice one strange thing, and that the um, header for the class is public at interface command data. This is because um, annotations work pretty much the same as an interface, uh, but since it's an annotation, we put the little at in front of interface to uh, denote that it is an annotation and not just a plain interface. Uh, so what we're going to do is we need to actually add two annotations to this annotation or else it will not work correctly. First one's going to be at retention. Uh, it's going to take uh, retention policy dot runtime. What this means is we're saying that we need to um, store this annotation until runtime. So if I annotate a class with command data and I didn't have this, then it would get that annotation would get erased. So when I tried to access the data, it wouldn't be annotated anymore when it got exported and it wouldn't work. So what we're doing with this retention policy is we're telling it keep this information. So like if I annotate this add class with command data, I need to keep that command or retain this command data uh, information until runtime, which is when the program or plugin is run, so that I can actually access the data. That's very important that you have that. Second thing that's also important is uh, at target, and this is going to take element type dot type. Now, uh, and import target. Okay, so what this means is um, we're basically specifying the target of this. Uh, interface. So we're saying that this can be uh, put on any type, which is a declaration of a, um, like, you know, a class, an enumerator, an interface, or even a, uh, an uh, annotation. So like, for example, uh, Java or Bucket will specify the uh, event handler annotation, uh, but as you can see, it won't let me put it here because it's disallowed for this location. Event handler is only allowed for methods because only methods are in charge of handling events, and that makes sense. Uh, so it's not allowed here. And in this case, command data, well, we only want it to be allowed on a class declaration because it only applies to a class. So we're just making it so that people can't, you know, apply it to a method, which, you know, just wouldn't make any sense. Uh, so now what we want to go ahead and say... And I might get this wrong on the first try, but uh, we, we were going to take this information, the get name, get description, and get args. So the first one is going to be a uh, string called get name. The second one is going to be a string called get description. And what's the third one? A string called get args. So those are the three... Uh, pieces of data that need to be stored in the annotation. 
Now let's actually go ahead and try it out. We're going to eventually delete all of this code from the um, eco command class, but for now let's go over to add and actually I'm going to show you how to use the annotation. Right above the class before you uh, declare it, but right above it, so right before you know public class add, you want to go ahead and type at command data uh, to denote that we're using the command data uh, annotation and put the parentheses and uh, import it, of course. Now this is going to take three um, attributes or, you know, pieces of data and the three pieces of data that it needs are the name, description, and args. So we can just go ahead and copy that right from uh, here, actually. We can just copy that and hang on one second. Oh yes, I think that we wanted to surround these in brackets. Not sure. Okay, that might be wrong. Alright, uh, just give me one second. So I think that should actually do it. So if you go ahead and look in the command data annotation, we have get name, get description, and get args. And those are, uh, we're setting them right here. So we're saying that um, get name is equal to add, get description is equal to add money to balance, and get args is equal to, you know, player and then the amount. And those are the three pieces of data that are needed by this um, uh, interface. So now let's actually just go ahead and put this in remove and top. So this is going to be here at command data. And it's going to be uh, get name is equal to remove. Um, what is this? Get description is equal to remove money from balance. I don't want to copy that. And uh, get args is equal to that. And no semicolon at the end since it's an annotation. And of course, you need to make sure that you import it. Now I'll go ahead and do um, at command data. Get name is equal to top. Get description. Description is equal to get top balances and get args is equal to uh, nothing. There are no arguments. And then that should do it for there. Now I'm going to actually go ahead and show you how to use this. We're going to go over to not command data but command manager and actually go ahead and add this. Now, eco command will still will still have that since it uh, defines that public abstract void run, which we want. Uh, but we're going to actually switch it over here in this instance and in this in instance to um, change that over. So first, let's actually go ahead and delete this just so we don't have any confusion at all. And, of course, you want to delete the constructor that you calls the super... Uh, constructor because it doesn't exist anymore so and also in top just want to get rid of that so now over here you'll see that we're getting all of these different uh, errors and now we're going to actually make them work so we're going to go ahead and say um, command data name of the annotation uh, data is equal to c dot get class dot get annotation and then it's going to take uh, command data dot class now, what we're doing here, this is what's called reflection, and you don't really need to know what that is, but basically, it allows you to get information about, um, you know, a class and other attributes while uh, the class is loaded. So by calling this get class, this is defined in object, so every single um, object in Java has this get class method, and this returns, as you can see, a runtime class of the object. So, um... In this case, you know, we're, get, we're returning the class and then we're getting the annotation that is uh, the command data annotation. So, um, this, so basically we're, uh, you know, getting this annotation. Now, again, if you remember, we said retention policy to be runtime. If that were not runtime, if it were, like, I think, source, then that, um, this, then that annotation would be gone and it would... Uh, it would not be able to find any information for the annotation. Now, if I go ahead and just quickly show you the dot, you'll see that you see uh, some stuff that you uh, don't defaultly see. There's the uh, annotation type, which is just the uh, class that represents the type of the annotation, not terribly important. But then you will see get args, get description, and get name, which are uh, defined by us. So we're going to actually go ahead and use them right here. We're going to replace C with data, and again with data, 
and again with data. So now we're getting this uh, command data. We're getting all of the data in s for the command data annotation inside of this class. So this eco command, you know, the first time it runs, it'll be add. Then it gets the annotation, the command data information from the add class. So it gets all of this, and then I can access the data like that. So now let's just go ahead and copy that down there. Since we have the same thing, and replace C with data, and there you go. So now, instead of uh, storing that data inside of the eco command class, we are storing it in an annotation, and then we're accessing the annotation later and getting the data from the annotation. It's just another way of doing it, and I personally think uh, that it's pretty neat. Uh, it might not be the best idea to use it here in particular, uh, because, you know, it's not too much easier, but uh, there are tons of uh, different ways that you can use annotations to simplify things, and I just wanted to show you. Uh, now, we'll go ahead and uh, might as well export this and make sure that it works. So, uh, let's go ahead and export this as Economy29. Alright, and let me go grab the server. Uh, testing server and start up the testing server. And all right, server is going to start up. So uh, now we are over at the server, and uh, so I installed the plugin and started up the server. And let's actually just go ahead and test it. Uh, so if you see if we go ahead and say eco, um, see I guess I uh, I was testing it. And I do have a balance, but um, as you can see. Uh, it does say slash eco add uh, then you know player and amount so it obviously was able if you we go ahead and take a look at the code for a second it was obviously able to pull the name arguments and description and if I go ahead and test it quickly um, let's just go ahead and remove the money from my account um, we'll remove the twenty nine dollars and you'll see it says remove twenty nine dollars from Pokestick twenty nine they now have zero dollars which also means that it was obviously able uh, to you know figure out the arguments and it was able to get the data it found the thing with the correct name and then it actually ran it and it works so if I do eco again you'll see it says your balance is zero dollars so it obviously saved the correct balance and it does work so that's all for this video I just wanted to show you guys uh, how to use annotations uh, you know to basically simplify stuff instead of having you know instead of having to uh, have a uh, field in your class, so like if you want to store those three values before, we used to have uh, a field in the class to store that value, and then you would have to put it in a constructor, and then you would have to write a getter for it, and then you would also uh, need to, in a subclass, call the super constructor with the values you want, but this way you could just annotate each class individually, uh, give it the data that, that you want it to have, and then access it easily. So it's just another way of going about doing it, and I think that uh, a lot of you will find it easier. So that's all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon uh, with some more bucket coding and other coding videos.